Hello all, and welcome to another one of Kilroy's Deep Dives. You know, and I did a whole uh, video on what I'm meaning by deep dives and what, what I'm planning on doing with these deep dives. But one of the things I left out was, what am I diving into? You know, what are the different levels and what does it mean by to dive down or to bore down into or look at look at different conflicts through lens of different games at different levels. And so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking about what I mean by levels. And that's really talking about war game scale. So uh, bear with me. I thought I'd go a little bit into war game scale. And I thought this module might be helpful as kind of a, a war gaming 101 topic. Um, and I might try to put a, a, a some kind of content out, you know, going through my different videos and how they're might be helpful to you know people getting into wargaming or understanding wargaming. Uh, not that I am the end all be all on any of that. Um, I, I really don't know all that much. But I thought I'd share some of my thoughts on on that uh, on that topic and on some of the different aspects of the topic. So, you know, so so people can kind of figure out where I'm coming from and understand my context, and it might be helpful to them as well. So when we're talking about wargame scale. You know, if you go back to uh, Clausewitz and some of his writings, boil down scale into in its basic form into strategy and tactics. So you have two levels: you have strategy and you have tactics. And for most people, that's perfectly fine. That's that's all they need. Uh, if they need that, <laughs> that's all they need is to understand that there's strategic level games and there's tactical level games. However, others have kind of uh, added to that and have added a, a, a intermediate la layer as, as the operational. So you have strategic. You have operational, and you have tactical, and I, you know, I'm fine with that as well. That helps me classify and categorize games as well, as far as where they fit into one of those three levels, and and that's a useful uh, tool to me, you know, understanding uh, those three levels, and and might be useful to you as well. Um, however, others have taken it even further and have added. You know something above strategic and have added something in between operational and tactical uh and have have like a five scale uh aspect as well so and we're going to get into that and, and what that uh and that may that's going to be probably the main focus of uh, of this discussion is what kind of looking at the five scales and and what's the context uh, around that uh however you know sticking with the three scales you know, an example of that is here on this chart that I pulled up that was talking about um, Desert Storm, Operation Desert Storm. But I thought it was a useful uh, chart to provide some context into the um, into the three scale uh, format. In that, if you look at like the tactical level, let's work our way up here. You know, this is really looking at small unit actions, small engagements. Uh, and and battles and that's that's really the tactical level. And then when you're getting to the operational level, you're you know graduating up to a larger geographic scope. You're looking at major operations. You're looking at uh, campaigns, and so you're getting into a, a larger area both in geographic scope, but also in uh, command structure and you know a larger number of units involved uh, and the like. Uh, then when you get up to the strategic level, you're going beyond campaigns, you're getting into an entire theater, and you might actually get into other aspects beyond the military, like national policy and, and economic issues and the like when you're getting into the strategic uh, level. So, you know, that's an example of, the, of some context around the um, three scale model. Uh, let, let, let's turn to that five scale model I was talking about here, and, and here's a chart that um, kind of put some context around that. And I'm not saying that this chart is, I didn't prepare this chart, I got it off Board Game Geek, but I, I found it useful and, uh, um, and a good illustration of, of the different uh, scales or the five scales, but it also puts some context around it in that here's some war games that this person thought fit within those scales. It puts some uh, um, scale around or some context around unit size or combatant size that might fit into those scales and also some unit designations, you know, from squad all the way up to, you know, army and what have you uh, that, that might fit within these different scales. And so you have, you know, starting at the bottom, you know, or the smallest number of units, you have tactical, grand tactical, operational, strategic, 
and brand strategic. And so, again, uh, I'm not, I might disagree actually with some of the things on this chart, but I think for the most part, it's a good representation of, of how, how, how someone might look at, at these different scales or look at the five scale model. Now, some concepts to remember as we're kind of talking about war game scale. Uh, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, scales dependent on the time period, and, and actually a unit scale could change over time uh, as policy and, and doctrines change over time. Um, and so uh, also opinions about scale or where, where we classify something could change. And doesn't mean just because, just like in that chart, the, they put a certain game in a certain scale, uh, I might put a certain game in a certain scale. That doesn't mean I'm right, uh, and doesn't mean I'm wrong. That's my perspective, and and it's my understanding. And it could change as I play the game more, or as I play other games. I might realize, hey, this game really uh, is better, uh, better fits in, uh, or fits better into a different scale. Uh, maybe one up, one down, or what have you. Um, and so that also comes a lot comes about because of you know these aren't hard and fast rules. This isn't the black letter law on war game scale. This is, these are guidelines. This is, you know, my understanding, uh, which is evolving. And these are just guidelines and notes. And I'm just trying to give you some context on how I'm looking at things. So you understand as I, you know, as I talk about scale or talk about levels, you kind of understand where I'm coming from. And uh, there's a lot of blurring here. You know, there's blurring between tactical and grand tactical and grand tactical and operational and operational strategic. There's going to be some blurring going on here. And these are areas that are, you know, if you're a, a, a crusty grognard, you know, this is ripe for arguments and this is something you're going to defend to the last breath. But uh, that's not my point here. My point is not to end any arguments or, or settle any arguments or to start any arguments. I'm just trying to give you some context on my understanding of scale. And I'm happy to see whatever comments you have and and what you guys think about any of this. Um, so getting into the five scales, I'm gonna look at this uh, really from three different areas, uh, geographic scope, primary focus, and unit scale. I'm gonna try to look at those three aspects of each of these different scales um, and give some context there of my understanding. And I'm also give some example of games. And when I give an example of game, I'm, I'm basically pulling games from my collection um, and they might not be the best example or the definitive example. I'm not saying that this is the definitive example. These are examples. I think that they generally fit the, the context and give some, uh, uh, help you give some uh, better understanding of what games fit into that scale. Um, if you think I'm wrong, well, say I'm wrong. That's fine. Put it in the comments. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not here to fight about it. Uh, if there's a better game, I might not be familiar with it or I might, uh, might not have played it or might not own it, uh, or it might be my collection and I just I just skipped over it when I was doing this. But uh, feel free to comment and say whatever you whatever you think about any of that stuff. But I thought I'd just give some games as an example to, to put some context uh, or put some meat on the bone, so to speak, so people can kind of say, okay, yeah, so that game kind of fits into that scale. Um, and opinions vary. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, okay? So let's start with uh, the grand strategic uh, level. And so starting off with geographic scope, you know, this is going to be the most expansive. So if we're talking about uh, World War One or World War Two, I mean, this is going to be the entire world. OK, this is going to be both the uh, World War Two This is going to be both the Pacific and the European theater and um, Northern Africa and the Atlantic and, and the whole kit and caboodle. OK, so this is going to be the most expansive in scope when we're looking at the strategic, uh, grand strategic level. Um, with respect to uh, the primary focus, this is going to go beyond just the military aspect. You know, we're just not looking at, you know, um, you know, armies and fighting uh, other armies and what territories did they did they take over or ground did they take. We're looking at, you know, national interests and policy being modeled or simulated as well. And so this is going to involve, a lot of times is going to involve political and economic aspects. It could get into cultural or social type aspects um, that um, that are being modeled as well and how that affects uh, the gameplay. You know, for example, in Vietnam, if at a grand strategic level, you're going to get into national will and 
and you know the politics back home, so to speak, and, and aspects of that uh, in uh, in the gameplay. Economic is usually portrayed in these games as well. Uh, it might be abstracted, but it, it's going to be portrayed or, or be some element of the game as well. Um, when we look at unit scale, again, we're looking at the largest forces represented. You know, you're looking at armies or legions if you're in ancient times, or, or army groups. You're looking at large units that are involved here. Um, examples of some games here are Empires of the Middle Ages, um, Here I Stand, uh, the Napoleonic Wars, and um, uh, World of Flame Blitz. You know, the uh, the aspect here of uh, Here I Stand um, is, I think, a good example here of, of the primary focus. Uh, the military aspect of Here I Stand is, is not the, the forefront here. I mean, it's the, the political and the religious uh, and somewhat economic aspect uh, are just as important, if not more so, uh, in, in that game. Uh, so, you know, th th that's, that's the grand strategic uh, scale. Moving on next to the strategic scale, um, in geographic scope, you know, it's still a large geographic area. We're not talking about the whole, well, we could be talking about the whole world, but more often than not, we're talking about, you know, something just short of that. Um, th this is still strategic, but we're also looking at it from um, mostly the military point of view. I mean, this is um, theater strategy. This is military strategy. This is uh, not so much of an emphasis on the economic or political. It might have some aspects of that, and that that's kind of the blurring you get sometimes between strat strategic and grand strategic, but uh, it's really more focusing on the military aspect now uh, in, in, a, in a large strategic uh, representation. A uh, unit scale here, you know, is still pretty, pretty big. I mean, we're looking at legions, divisions, corps, army, uh, pretty big uh, units involved here. Um, some games or examples of some games that fit within this are Julius Caesar from Columbia Games, uh, The Guns of August, um, Empire of the Sun. Uh, now there's, you know, here's right for argument and some blurring here. You know, The Guns of August possibly could be put in the grand strategic. I think that really focuses more on the military aspect than necessarily the political or economic. And so I, I kind of drop it down into the strategic. Um, Empire of the Sun is an example that you know could drop down into the next area. We're going to talk about operational, but I feel that you know there's there's some national will there. There's some other aspects of that game that I, I kind of pop it up into the strategic. And plus, it's it's such a, a large scope, uh, you know, the entire Pacific that I think it fits there. But again, you know, subject to um, other people's you know thoughts and opinions as well. Uh, moving on to the next one is operational. And so in geographic scope, we're talking about areas of operations, regions uh, of the campaign. You know, we're, we're really talking about campaigns here uh, for the most part. Um, you're not um, trying to model the entire conflict that you might be doing in the strategic or grand strategic. You're, you're talking about, you know, major important aspects of that conflict. You know, the Barbarossa campaign uh, in World War II on the Eastern Front. Um, the uh, the Wilderness War uh, in this in the Civil War. I mean, you're talking about major campaigns that uh, that might have persisted over you know several days or, or weeks or months, uh, <laughs> World War II years maybe uh, that, um, that that you're really focusing on here uh, as opposed to the entire uh, uh, conflict. And, uh, and you're also focused on logistics and supply. You're getting more into that. I mean, there's economics in the strategic and grand strategic, but here we're getting into the logistics. You're getting into how to get the bullets to the battlefield, you know, how to get the soldiers there. And so you're going to have games that talk about supply lines and talk about, you know, you're going to have, in World War II, you're going to have trucks and trains. And, um, and in the Middle Ages, you're going to have, you know, carts and horses and 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 the sleds in the the frozen areas. So um, you're you're getting into logistics and supply more on the operational uh, uh, level of games. Uh, unit scale here are divisions, brigade, battalion, regiment. Again, this is not definitive. You can have games. You can have uh, units that are different scale than these, but this is just a general representation of the kind of units you're going to find. 
in this uh, operational scale. Some examples of games include um, Nevsky uh, from the Middle, middle Ages uh, or mid, uh, medieval times kind of period, uh, Napoleon at Bay, which you know started off a whole uh, uh, campaign series on Napoleonics that there's several games in that series and it's, it's a really good uh, um, operational uh, representation of, of Napoleonics. Um, Stonewall in the Valley, I mean, that, again, that's another representation of the uh, great battles, or sorry, great campaigns of the American Civil War, um, which some people consider the definitive operational series on, on the Civil War. Uh, and then you have uh, what I use here is um, for World War II, you know, Mark Semenich's uh, Zokban system or 4X system or wherever you want to call it. Uh, where he's got several games in this uh, that share some similar mechanics and, and rules that cover uh, World War II. Um, you know, now the definitive game in the series, yeah, I don't know, but 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 it could you know it could be OCS. Uh, I just don't I don't I'm not as familiar with OCS. I don't don't own an OCS game. Uh, that's a subtle hint for any supporters out there. I'm just kidding, but uh, that might very well be the. Uh, definitive game for World War II that fits within this uh, fit was within this scale. Uh, moving on to the grand tactical uh, scale, you know, in geographic scope, you know, we're talking about uh, we're, we're now starting to focus on battle. So we're talking about an area or region of the battle. So our scope here is is not going to be an entire theater. Uh, it's not even going to be the like a, a, a campaign operations or theater of operations, we're really talking about a battle here. So we're talking about the area around the battle um, that, uh, you know, whether it was leading up to the battle or the battle itself or the aftermath of the battle, but we're really focusing on the area or region uh, in and around the battle. And the primary focus there is the battle. So uh, or a battle or a very large or protracted engagement. Uh, which is probably a battle, right, uh, that we're talking about here. And unit scales include brigades, regiments, battalions, or company. Again, you know, you could go above and beyond, uh, above or below that, but that's just a general representation of what might be uh, fit within this grand tactical uh, level. Examples of some games are the Great Battles of Alexander, which is from the Great Battles of History series. There are several titles in that. Their uh, Napoleon's uh, Resurgence here, which is part of the Library of Napoleonic Games, uh, Zucker Games, which um, starts, I think, with uh, the last battles of Napoleon and is kind of taken off from there and is expanded into a pretty um, robust series and I think is very good at the grand tactical level for Napoleonics. Then you have uh, the Great Battles of the American Civil War. Here's Death Valley, which is um, a lot, a, a lot of content in it. There's a lot of battles in that uh, in that box, so it's good bang for your buck. But that's uh, there's several uh, games in that series that uh, at this level. And then uh, Panzer Battles, I pulled this out there uh, for, from the um, SES uh, series. SES kind of um, straddles some of these different levels, like for example, the Mighty Endeavor. You might that that probably feels more operational and gets into that, but there's several uh, titles in the SCS series that fit, fit to me more in the Grand Tactical, fit more into just dealing with the battle or the aspects of, of a specific battle. Um, and so that's why I put that there. Uh, coming up next is Tactical. Um, and you know, geographic scope is, is even smaller than a battle, so it might just be an aspect of the battle. It might just be, um, you know, like if it was a multi-day battle, it might just be the first day, or like Gettysburg, it might just be the, the action around, uh, you know, Little Round Top. Uh, so it just might be a very small aspect of the battle or a very focused uh, or narrow aspect of the battle or engagement. Uh, you know, the primary focus here is portions of battles, uh, you know, significant portions of battles. So, you know, it's significant enough that people want to model it or game it, but you know, we're not usually not talking about the entire battle, uh, usually, uh, or definitely not, you know, the lead up to the battle or the aftermath of the battle. We're just talking about a piece of, of the battle itself. Uh, unit scales here are company, platoon, squad, uh, even down to the individual or man to man um, uh, level. And then you have some uh, classic examples here is like Panzer Leader, Squad Leader, which, you know, gave birth to Advanced Squad Leader, which 
you know, might be considered the, for, by some, you know, the definitive game on the tactical level. This is the end-all, be-all of, of uh, tactical World War II. Uh, some people think that. I mean, there, there's a lot of games in this space. Um, and I threw out Firepower out there, which is, you know, tactical level, uh, trying to model modern conflicts. This came out in, I think, in the 80s, late 70s, 80s. Uh, uh, so model, model, modern combat at that time. Uh, so there's an example of that. Um, so there's your five scales, grand strategic, strategic, operational, grand tactical, and tactical. I kind of further subdivide tactical or go a little bit more focused into tactical and uh, call it small unit tactical. And this is where I, I kind of focus on just three levels here. Um, and this is just something that, that I've done because I, I worked on an art, uh, did an article on actually a geek list. It's on Board Game Geek that... Um, that talked about the evolution of these games, you know, starting with the, um, you know, starting with miniatures and working their way up to modern day and all the different kind of games that have, you know, played in this space of small unit tactical. And I'm mainly looking at platoon, uh, squad, and individual. And so at the platoon level, you know, an example of that is, you know, Storming the Gap, uh, 85. This is hypothetical, it's not historical. But uh, it's kind of platoon level and really more uh, focused on tank combat and the hypothetical 1980s uh, uh, World War III type environment. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of games in this space at platoon level, but I use that as an example. But also focus on the squad level um, of, uh, of small unit tactical. And you know, an example of that, if we're continuing on with the Storming the Gap, well then, you know, Heroes Against the Red Star is is uh, the squad level version uh, in that uh, in that genre uh, from uh, Lock and Load, and this is based on the Lock and Load tactical system. Uh, but there's a lot of games in this space. I mean, Advanced Squad Leader, which you know uh, a lot of people consider the the again the end all be all to squad level tactics for World War II. You know, there's Advanced Squad Leader in this space. There's Conflict of Heroes. There's Band of Brothers. There is uh, the, um, the last 100 yards. So, I mean, there, there's a, I'm leaving off a lot of games here, but there's a lot of games in this space that try to model squad level tactics. Uh, and one of the things that, that really kind of goes, that, that's a, um, a characteristic of tactical games versus um, grand tactical. Grand tactical usually are based on specific battles. Uh, there's a lot of historical context to it and you're modeling that battle. You know, uh, small unit tactical uh, engagements, you know, they might be based on a battle or a historical battle, but, you know, they're really getting, to my opinion, they get a little bit abstract. I mean, they're, they're, a lot of these games, you know, starting back with the Panzer Leader uh, in its genre, are scenario based. So they'll just put out a scenario there and you have units and you pull, uh, you're not sp pulling out a specific unit you know, uh, with this designation, you're pulling out, you know, kind of a generic unit. Now, it might have a specific designation on it. It might be an actual historical unit, but you're pulling out a group of units that represent that squad or a group of units that represent that platoon or what have you. And uh, you're playing out a scenario that, I mean, I don't know how historically accurate that scenario really is and how it's tied to the history or actual engagement. It might be dead on, but a lot of times, A, I don't know how how really dead on it is. It might just be more of an abstract. And you're really just, you're not really trying to model that specific in firefight or engagement at a tactical level. You're really trying to model, you know, the command structure and how how orders were given or taken or received and how units reacted to that and how morale uh, um, was uh, portrayed or, or relied upon or how it, how it was affected by the combat. And you're trying to, you know, small arms and, and combined arms and and how air or mortars or you know vehicles or tanks or what have you uh, work together with these units um, in in that in a specific you know tactical setting. So um, so that that's why I kind of set small unit tactical apart. They, they might be very historic, but sometimes they I, I don't know if they really are as historic as they are uh, of just trying to model the tactical essence. Of, of the situation. And um, and I think, and the rules in these can get very complex. Uh, Advanced Squad Leader is like a binder of, of, of several pages, I don't know, 50 pages, 100 pages, 200 pages, I don't know, 
Um, the event, the uh, Lock and Low Tactical, I think, is like over 50 or 100 pages. Uh, now, again, some of that is, you know, addendum and charts and what have you. But I mean, th th there's these rules can be very complex. I mean, they're they're trying to model. Um, you know, realism, I put those in air quotes, you can't see it, but I'm, I'm putting up air quotes, but you're trying to model realism or simulate realism in some aspect. And so sometimes these, these uh, rule sets can get very complex in trying to do that. Um, and then you have the individual. So, you know, small unit tactical to me is platoon, squad, and individual. And an example of that is uh, DBG's Warfighter, which is, um, can be played solo, it's primarily played solo, but can be played cooperative as well. Um, and uh, uh, there's uh, Modern and Stealth and World War II that covers both the uh, European theater and the Pacific theater and also um, aspects of Korean War. And there's other uh, titles coming out in that, um, in that game system. So at the individual level, again, these are not the end all be all. These are not the definitive. These are not all the ones that, uh, uh are the, are the best examples. These are just examples that, uh, I pulled from my collection to, to kind of prop out here. Um, and if you're interested in that article, you can check it out on BGG. It's under, uh, NAP 16, which is my BGG name there. And, uh, Take a look at that article if you want to see um, uh, kind of the evolution of, you know, from miniatures all the way up to modern day. And if I got gaps, feel free to give me comments on that. I appreciate that as well. So how do you view scale or levels in war games? Is, this, is that important to you at all? Is that just, or is that meaningless? I mean, do you really not care? I mean, you're, you want, you're interested in a historical topic or a battle or a war or a conflict and you just want to find out, you just want to get a game on it. You just want to see a game and how it models it, and you just want to play that. Or you're uh, more competitive, so you just want to get a game that that plays good, that, that's fun to play, that uh, um, is balanced enough that it can be a competitive endeavor. Or, or are you more interested in the mechanics? You just want to see what mechanics are out there. So scale and the different levels really don't mean much to you. Or are you somebody that, you know, you love ASL? So Tactical is your baby. That's your sweet spot, and that's all you play. All you play is tactical level games, and that's what you like getting into. You like getting into that 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 grittier level, that um, smaller units, and how the how how um, small unit arms are, are used, and and what have you. That's where that's your sweet spot. Um, or are you you know strategic? I mean, are you an epic kind of guy? You like the uh, the the politics of a situation or the cultural, the social aspects. You want to see how it developed over time and and have these, you know, negotiations that might might take play and see how that's modeled and how, you know, uh, epic events could change over time. Um, maybe you maybe that's maybe that's your 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 fit. So uh, Love to hear your comments. What what you uh, what you find interesting in the different levels, and what you like or don't like, or what you disagree with on how I kind of categorize this. But I just want to give some context of how I view things. So when you're looking at like one of my deep dives, you understand. Oh, this is what he means when he's kind of going from different level to level. This is kind of how he how he viewed it and why he did it that way. Um, but I just thought it might be useful in general. So uh, hopefully it was. <laughs> If not, you know, I, I tried. But uh, as always, you know, thank you for watching and appreciate, um, you know, you guys taking the time to spend some time with me. Thanks for watching.